Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about a really cool topic I like speaking about, mainly because I got a lot of my start in the whole content creation world and in the gaming industry world by social media. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about like what is some good strategies to use as a content creator. This is advice that I'm giving that I've used that has worked. I'm also giving some really awesome tips that I, I'm sure a lot of people, especially who use Twitter, um, may not realize. Um, but we're only going to be speaking about, I'm actually, yeah, I'm, we're only going to speak about Twitter because that's where the majority of my following and uh, a lot of the engagement that I do on social media is on Twitter. So if you're looking for something like for Facebook or Instagram, it will not be this video. I apologize. So mainly for a lot of content creators to like get their, their, their content out there for people to know that they're live. Uh, people like to tweet when they go live. Uh, one of the things that I think is really important, especially when you're trying to do content creation and getting people to come to your stream, is adding flavor to your going live tweets. The most thing, the many mistakes I see people doing, especially when they're first starting, which is okay. So if, you, if you've done this before, it's no judgment to you. This is to increase and better your social media presence. So say if you're going live, if you're just saying, I'm live, here's my link, I don't feel like a lot of people are going to go check that out. Tagging other people in your going live tweets who have nothing to do with your stream is not a good look. But the only ways that I say that using a hashtag and tagging other people makes sense is when you are tagging people who are streaming with you. If you're tagging a game that you're playing, that's all right. If you're hashtagging like, you know, a specific hashtag to the game that you're playing, I feel like those instances do make sense. But if you're just tagging people to watch your stream, that usually gets people annoyed and they don't want to interact with you. It can also get you to lose followers or people to block you, which you don't want to happen. But one good thing that really makes going live tweets stand out, I would say, is gifts from your stream um, and videos from your stream. The cool thing about Twitch is that they allow you to clip different moments from your stream and that's usually sometimes some things that I do. I'm going to show a little bit of an example of what I, I have done in a little bit so you'll see about that. That's really, really, really good because and when you have people who are on Twitter at any type of hours of the day, not everybody's going to see when you go live. But if you're showing them moments from your stream that they have may have missed and it was really funny, it may entice those people to come and check out your stream because they saw a funny clip. And and, and uh, go to your channel and follow you. I followed a lot of people on Twitter because I saw a clip from their stream that was really funny and thought that I w would like their content so I went to go check them out and I ended up being right. And so using those clips to your advantage on social media is a really good way of getting people to interact with you without you having to be live sometimes and also getting people to see your stream without having to leave Twitter sometimes. Um, so giving your going live tweets that flavor and also this is like after stream too. I do this a lot too if my stream if i stream and then i'm done with streaming and then i usually post like a funny clip from the stream that happened so for people who weren't able to watch they get to see what they miss and you give them that little bit of a feeling of like oh i missed out let me go and check this out and follow them later or see what i missed and i'll go watch the vod which is always good so give your going live tweets those little little bit of sprinkle of little little adding off flavor to make it like that more powerful because just simply saying i'm live here's the link that is not enticing people to come and check you out. Doing GIFs or videos or doing or writing a funny caption is usually really good. As for interacting with people on, on social media, I have always said, you know, there is the Twitch etiquette of, you know, making sure you don't go into people's stream and saying that you're a streamer. That's very, that's a, that's a lot of, on a lot of people's etiquette list. But one way I have always had people find out that I'm a streamer is that I would, you know, watch their channel and I'd follow them too. Not like saying, hey, I'm following you, I'm a streamer. It's just that if they look at your profile, they will see that you stream too. And interacting with people's tweets that you like is a really good way to get people to actually respond to you. Following creators that you like, following people who inspire you, responding to their tweets, asking questions is always something I like doing. Um, I built a lot of my engagement and following on, on Twitter by gifts and making just funny, um, I guess memes off of gifts that I thought about, about streaming culture and people thought it was funny. So they were retweeted. Um, this may not work for everybody, but just trying to come up with things to just talk about your personality and showcase it how you would want to. I have always been into the whole internet culture and, 
talking about it and i've always found that like when i talk about relatable things with streaming other people can relate to it so they want to interact with it and they may like share it or they may like it another quick tip that i would say for social media as a content creator is you know when you um say that you got a game for free to review um, always, I would say talking about it online is a really good way of showing that like, you know, here's more content outside of my stream if you don't get to see it. Here's the game I played. I think it's awesome. If you want to check it out, here it is. If you're tagging that company, they see that too is always a good thing. And then always talking about like things that you inspire to do. For me, I, I'm, I get really inspired by a lot of streamers who I am friends with, a lot of streamers who I may not know in person, but I see what they, they're doing. You know, I talk about my inspirations of trying to do charity events and then interacting with those charity events when those charity uh, accounts or, or companies um, who are going to be looking for streamers to be a part of their their activations. And I interact with them. And if I want to be a part of it, I make sure I say something because, you know, they tend to look and check you out later. Definitely another thing about social media strategy as a content creator, making sure that you have your contact information somewhere. And I always say in your bio on Twitter, on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on your YouTube. If you have a YouTube channel, having it somewhere. This is the most places that that brands will look to verify who you are or will look to to actually contact you. Um, I've been working in the gaming industry for a very long time. We've, I've made several videos about it. And this is a, the first way I will go check someone's channel by going to their Twitter account and, and seeing where their contact information is. I cannot tell you how many creators have lost out on really great opportunities I've been able to get for, get for them and not having any sort of way of contacting them. And I understand that there is there are different uh, people have a diff different like opinions about it because you know oh I might get you know some spam or some might might harass me. There might be a troll who might like email me. And this is what I always say to that. Like whenever you have a business email, that is the email that you know that is for your business as a content creator. And this is the first way that brands will email you or try to contact you because if there's no way to contact you at all, you're going to miss out on that deal because there's so many content creators out there that it only takes like a two second thing. They'll probably go look to see, you know, if you fit the bill, they'll, they'll go to look to contact you. If there's no information, on who you are or how to contact you, they're just gonna leave and go to the next person. And you don't wanna be caught up in that, which is, that's why I always stress you, make sure your 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 emails in your bio, if you have it in a pin tweet or, or on your channel, that is perfect because it's good for verification reasons and also an easy way to contact you because usually brands are not gonna send you a tweet saying, hey, can we contact you? Can you give us your best email? They rarely do that. And, and, and if they do, awesome but I rarely do see that. So that's definitely something you gotta look out for. Some other tips I would say on, on social media strategy is, um, yeah, like people have been weird about re retweeting your own tweet. And at this point, I, I it's not weird for me because like I have a certain amount of followers and not everybody's on at the same time. So I have a, a, like a lot of US followers and a lot of people in Europe so there'll be times that I'll be awake and if it's a tweet that had a lot of engagement, I'm gonna reshare it for the people who may not have seen it um, previously. So I have no problem doing that. Um, saying if you're, if you're streaming for, I don't know, five hours and you're planning on doing an eight hour stream, you wanna retweet that, I don't see a problem with that because it's just resharing it to the people who weren't there the first time. So that's another thing I think Resharing your, your content is never a bad thing just because it's reaching people who may not have seen it. I would not do it in such a time period where it's like, it's been two hours and then you retweet it again because then it's like, okay, that's not really reaching the people that you want to reach. It's just helping to reach other people who are in a completely different time zone so they are able to see your content that they may have missed before. Just trying to do fun stuff on 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 social media which I think is awesome. Like if you have if you give away products, that's really cool. Like I do giveaways for, you know, my sponsors from Elgato, from Corsair. I do that sometimes and that does help bring in some new people um, into following following my my Twitter account or my my social media accounts 
but you have to realize if you do do these giveaways on social you may just get a few people who are just there to try to win something and if they don't they're gonna they're gonna go but that's just a kind of fun thing for me uh, to kind of reward people who have been following me for a long time and want to give them awesome awesome products and that's why when I usually do these giveaways, I try to make sure that I keep it to a certain criteria so it's not just like it's out there in the world and like, you know, the giveaway bots can can, can take the win, you know? But there's a way to filter that, which is always good. Other stuff for social media strategy. Um, yeah, just interacting, like interacting with your viewers or interacting with the people who who respond to your tweets or interacting with other creators or, or brands is always a good way to, to start the conversation. I always ask a lot of questions because I'm always curious about how other people feel feel about how they how they deal with content creation and it's it's definitely uh, been a journey so that's why I like to I like to make these videos just for people who who are looking for a little bit of extra help in that I'm I do not know every single thing about content creation slash social media but this is the stuff that has worked for me I've done a few different like uh, courses on this but um, I will we're gonna get to this part that I've been talking about which is on Twitter and I'm going to show you an example of this, and I learned this a little bit ago, and I've done this a few times, but we're going to go to that scene, and then we're going to talk about it for a little bit, and hopefully you can use this for when you go live, or if you're also going to use it after you've been streaming to showcase a funny clip from your stream. All right, let's get to it. All right, so one cool thing that um, I think Twitter users should be very aware of is that there is a feature that you can use where um, you can actually post videos and actually um, or you're going live tweets. So say for example, it's right here, and then more part, it's media and studio. So these are all the, the images and videos I've ever posted uh, on Twitter, but what I've done in the past, say if I'm trying to upload a video for my stream, say here, we're using this clip, we upload that, and as it's uploading, it will showcase here, Sorry, we, hopefully we can speed this up pretty quickly while it's processing. But yeah, the Media Studio is where a really great way to post some of the some of your content for going live tweets here instead because you can actually link to your channel so people can click on it. All right, so the video is processed. So this is like a clip for my stream. So say if I was going live, I would say um, playing, uh, come hang out. And then I put like my Twitch link here. So this will show up in the tweet, um, but I'm just gonna copy this here. And so the cool thing about this, you go to edit media settings and then you could put uh, the call to action, which uh, the call to action, you put the link of your, of your, of your channel here. Let me make sure I do this right. Is this right? That, that. Yeah. And so the cool thing is that you can say uh, visit the site or watch now. So if you're live right now, you put in watch now and then it's loading up and then you sit that tweet to go live and then you go to your uh, your Twitter here, twitter.com. So now there'll be a tweet out here that says play now, watch live, uh, play with friends, come hang out, my channel's here. But if you watch right there, there's a little thing that says watch now at twitch.tv. People click on it and it takes them right to your channel. So that's some, some cool stuff that if you didn't know about that, you should definitely check it out. All right, so we asked this question on Twitter because I thought it'd be really cool to answer some of these questions for people who had the had questions on Twitter. So thank you to everybody who who responded. Um, if you're if you're if your your question was at, was answered here, you'll be in the video. So thank you so much. So the question was, uh, would what would you like to know about social media strategy as a content creator? This is my next YouTube video topic, and I wanted to answer questions people may have. If your question gets chosen, it will be in the video. Hit me with those questions. All right, so we're gonna start going into some of these questions. Um, how can you leverage your social media to get partnership slash branding opportunities? What works best for you? That is an excellent question. And the first thing I'm gonna say is when you have a Twitter account, and I feel like a lot of people don't realize this, you have to check in your settings and there is a place that is called analytics that you'll find. You click on the analytics and you have to turn them on. They are not on by default because I don't know why, but you have to physically go in there and turn them on. It may be on by default now, I don't know, but when I first turned them on, I had to turn them on myself. So that is the best way to have your tweets be analyzed, get the stats on like every month of how much um, you're gaining on social media on your tweets so when you get those stats you can actually screenshot them and then send it to brands and being like you know i get this much engagement a month i get 
I don't know, 1 million engaged impressions on, on Twitter. And, and this is what, you know, when I tweet this out, pe this many people see it. That's really important to how you can leverage that for partnerships and, and partnerships, sorry, partnerships and sponsorships with different brands because they can actually see when you tweet stuff and you tweet about different products, it's people are seeing what you're saying. So it's definitely a good way to leverage, um, you know, uh, partnerships or sponsorships definitely make sure that an those analytics are in there so people can so you can get your tweets counted and get all the stats for that all right next uh how do you go about spending slash managing your content to multiple platforms is it possible to be on too many platforms or doing too many different types of content for me managing youtube in addition to twitch is what i'm trying to learn for me i was really focused on twitch and twitter and that was it and now the whole industry has opened up to you know, all different sorts of platforms like TikTok. That one I'm still I'm still learning, but there's so many people who have gained lots of followers on TikTok by just using clips from their channel and, and formatting it in such a way that it, it works on TikTok. So I definitely see that being a big thing. For me, I think it's about the t how much time you have. And it's it's a lot of time to manage, you know, you know, posting on Twitter, posting on Facebook, posting on Instagram, posting on TikTok and all this kind of stuff. Sometimes you just need to set a day if you have the time to do so. Set a day where you just go through all your content that you want to post on the different platforms. If you have to schedule it out, you can do that. Uh, the good thing about if you have these clips available and you can you can format them and put them on different platforms, they are, they're not going to expire. So you have time to do that and you could slowly do one once a day or once a week or however, however long you want to do so. Um, but it's all about managing the time that you actually can realistically have and just making sure that you can do it when you can. Uh, let's see, we have we have a lot of good questions here. How do you befriend other content creators while not wanting to impose on, oh, not, not to impose on using them just as for content sake? And honestly, I feel like that is, everybody goes through that and feeling like, you know, they don't want to come off as like using people. But this is what I've always learned. Be a genuine person. Actually, if you're actually interested in talking to this person and interacting with them, be genuine about it. That's the easiest way to make it not be like, oh, you're only talking to me because I have this many followers. Like, I always have interacted with people who I generally had interest in their content and them as people. So it was never, I'd never really had that much of a problem, you know, thinking that if I was talking to someone, they were thinking I was using them. Be genuine. Like, like that's how you grow seriously in this industry is just being a genuine person because people will see when you're when you're being yourself or you're just doing stuff to try to get ahead um it's very it's very apparent i know i've been doing this for a long time so i definitely can see that from a mile away but just being genuine that's that's the best thing so what are some steps uh newer slash uh amateur creators can take to polish their online presence and appear more professional we kind of went over some of this in the in this video but i, I could kind of re talk about it definitely having your your you know your business email in your bio and have that all ready to go kind of also preparing yourself to have uh a, like a, a elevated pitch of your channel and who you are as a creator if you could talk about this is you know i'm a variety streamer and i i i, I stream uh, monday through friday i raise money for charity every uh, every tuesday on uh, my community they love playing uh games they, they love playing uh shooter games or they love playing f uh, uh minecraft and and building just having that elevator pitch about what you are as a creator is something that you should always just have on the ready in case like you go to a convention or if you're reaching out to a brand or if you're if someone's actually literally saying I want to know about your stream. Can you tell me a little bit more about yourself? You already know what to say. It's already there. And um, I would say for like, you know, newer creators, making sure that you're not just posting like all your content is just live. I'm, I'm live. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Go live, going live, going live, going live. Add some flavor to the going live tweets. Also add some stuff that you are thinking about or talking about some real life stuff. If you're comfortable with talking about it, like I talk about stuff that happens in real life. I talk about social issues. I talk about things that I, I want to uh, do in my life. I talk about streaming. I talk about jokes from streaming. I talk about past experiences to relate to other people. I ask questions um, just being just just be yourself online. Uh, to as comfortable as you want to be don't like tell everything but just to the point where you can actually uh, feel comfortable being online and and doing that 
and for newer streamers yeah just definitely mm, definitely making sure from the beginning you understand how your statistics and your analytics work with your channel and your social media off the bat is going to help you so much it will it will get you very far in this industry if you already understand that from the beginning which i wish i understood that like a long time ago i probably got like a lot more things accomplished uh, while doing that but yeah uh that's what i have for social media strategy i know that it's just kind of a small um little bit of it and there's a lot more that i can talk about uh, feel free to ask more questions in the comments because i usually answer people's questions if if there's something i didn't uh, i didn't talk about uh but thank you so much for checking out this video hopefully it helps out and we'll see you in the next one make sure you like comment and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one all right see ya bye